First look at a new floor plan, a new series from Grand Design today. And if you're like me, you're already asking, why is there no room in here for a squatty potty and a caramel macchiato? Nobody? Just me? Uh, all right, noted. Hey! Josh the RV nerd of Bish's RV here with a new series of uh, Grand Design Transcend. Uh, there's, there's going to be a little bit of a, a, a slight restructuring in the family. Previously, most of the Transcends were known by the name Explore, which is what this is. Most of the existing Transcend models are going to move up into what's called Just Transcend. The Explore series that we're looking at here will be their like lighter weight, um, a little bit simplified, lower price point, brother. And that's the thing, is that these Transcends have been great, but in the world of stick and tin campers, they've been a little spendy. And they thought, you know, we, we need something for folks who like want a Grand Design RV, but don't want to go neck deep into the budget. And that's where this comes in. This is a simple, easy, smart, no slide bunkhouse. And I had to laugh. I'm calling it a new floor plan. It's very similar, obviously, to their 274B, what's it called, 274BH? 247BH. 274 is the Jayco version, sorry, squirrel. But um, this is a very classic floor plan that is just being reintroduced to the marketplace. What's cool about it is it gives us a sofa staring straight out of a campsite window. Now, it doesn't have a factory TV. This is a more basic equipment set than you're used to finding from a grand design, but it's got, it's ready for a TV if you want one. It's prepped for solar if you want one. Still has the enclosed docking center, the heated belly. The things that are just easy for them to continue doing structurally, that's all there. Um, the the look of it still reads very much like a, a Transcend. It's just not built with all the crazy, flashy, fancy, over-the-top stuff. That means it's lighter, it's less expensive, it's easier to access. For someone like me who only casual camps, this is probably one of the best grand design options that I've personally seen for like me and my family. So as we go here, let me know what you think about this. The good, the bad, the ugly with everything in between. And uh, I'll try to do my best to share where it's awesome and maybe where it's not. And we'll meet you down in the comment section when you let me know what you think of her, I guess. Now I would mention real quick, this is not a um, totally final finished uh, production model. This is like one of their, not maybe their first prototype, but it's in that like, hey, we're, we're ironing out the very last of the details kind of phase right here. So there might be a few very subtle minor changes when this thing actually goes in production, starts rolling into uh, some of our stores. Um, there's a, a regular viewer known as Spider the Nimble who uh, really enjoyed Transcend RVs for a long time, but really was not a fan of the plaid uh, cushion work that they were doing. I don't think they were necessarily alone. You, you, uh, Mr. or Ms., I, I'm not sure, uh, Spider the Nimble, since that doesn't exactly imply much, um, you'll be happy to note that there is no plaid in here. This is a very classic design. I mean, there's not a whole lot of, in terms of floor plan, really new stuff going on here, but it's smart, effective content. Like, we got the flip-flop shop shoe garage right there by the door. Um, the, uh, it's a tr very, again, this is a more budget focused transcend, so very basic booth dinette. Uh, we'll see in a little bit that there is some storage below that. You do have nice campsite window coverage, a place to add a TV, but not actually including one. Um, and interesting, I don't know that it's wrong or bad, but interesting little choices. Like look where those power outlets are located, kind of right at the middle of the, the two bunks so they could be used upstairs or down. That's a smart decision that doesn't really ding the price tag too awful hard, you know what I mean? Now, one of the other kind of uh, neat things here is if you are stuck inside on a rainy day, you're going to want a place to be able to kind of, you know, plop your backside down and relax for a while. And if you want everybody seated around, you can just use it in full, like, bench sofa mode. Or you can use it in simulated cinema mode right here, the little drop-down armrest with the cup holders, which I really like because... I'm one of those people, like, I just consume a large quantity of liquids all the time. If, in case you couldn't notice by this camel hump of a dad belly that I have. Um, yeah, there you go. By the way, I saw some stupid thing recently where, remember Hugh Jackman as Wolverine in the very first X-Men movie? People are now saying he had a dad bod in that first movie. The, the, the term dad bod, it's just stupid. It doesn't mean anything anymore. It's completely meaningless at this point, as far as I'm concerned. If Hugh Jackman had a dad bod... Um, and I'm in that category. Well, suddenly I don't feel too awful bad. Uh, <laughs> taking a look here, cracking this stuff open. Um, 
I, I love those drawers right by the entry door. Now, there is storage under the bench. You do have to lift the top on it, but the back bench by the bunks, you want to be careful because that's where your water pump's located, so you, you, you want to make sure that, you know, cargo doesn't shift and smash in there. You may want to close that up a little bit if you're going to put cargo down there. Individual curtains for each of the bunks is actually really nice. And of course, both the sofa and the dinette can fold down into uh, additional sleeping spaces. But a cool thing that they're doing, it's a rollover sofa with, with legs that, that fold down. So it can actually hold someone who's a little bit heavier if you put a decent sized person on there. That being said, it's not a long sofa. The sofa and the dinette are going to be short sleepers. Heck, the bunks are basically short sleepers. Most bunks are about a full size bed. They're about 54 by 74, give or take a little bit. Now, this also has that slight little corner cutaway action on it, which can make, you know, finding specific sheets for it a little bit tricky. You may notice that we had centralized air up here. Uh, you know, even though it's basically a one room cabin, you do have a private bedroom and a private bath, obviously, which is <laughs> everybody wants to obviously there. Um, you, uh, <laughs> you could still get some airflow, uh, cooling around, cruise around. So, oh, I just noticed something. They normally don't do this, but again, it's the more budget sensitive series of Transcend. It doesn't have windows for each of the bunks. So that bottom bunk is going to feel a little bit closed in. Now, this is pretty pet friendly. We're carpetless and uh, we're ventless. You'll also see this uh, when we get to the kitchen. It does have the handy little, you know, pet dish situation going on. But that being said, you're going to want small pets for this thing. Something I think a lot of people are going to appreciate. They don't do the peekaboo, I smell you bathroom doors uh, on these. Um, it is six and a half foot tall from floor to ceiling. So what that means, if you're my size, a little over six foot by the time you step into the shower you are uh, putting your head up in the skylight. And it is a basic vent fan. But here's the thing. There's actually some of the more budget-sensitive trailers trying to get away with no bathroom vent fan right now. And I respectfully feel like that is one corner that would just be cut too sharply. Uh, my two cents. Um, I, I don't love open-face bathroom storage, but for, like, rolling up stuff and towels in there, it's fine. It's, it's not going to hurt anything. Um, as we talked about, there's barely room for a squatty potty and a Caravel Macchiato in this thing. But for somebody my size, actually, the bathroom is um, fairly fluffy friendly overall. Now, I'm not at the best angle to display it, so so pardon me here. But I do want you to know that in the uh, corner here, you actually do have a place to wash your hands. And I like that they actually give us a medicine cabinet, not just a mirror on the wall. And you can see how it is angled. So, uh, you know, you actually still have the... Um, uh, a little more comfort in the bathroom when you're using it. You're not like smashed all the way up against the wall or something stupid like that. Uh, backing up here a little bit, we've only really seen it from the front facing the back. Let's start uh, taking a look at it the other way, but we're actually going to take a look at the, uh, the, the, the kitchen here first. Crack it open that. Looks like 8 cubic foot 12 volt DC compressor fridge. There's a big pocket below that, and then there's a pet dish below that. And if you don't care at all about that pet dish thing, no big deal. You can basically, uh, the, the black plastic insert, it's just two Phillips head screws that hold it in place. You could just unscrew that and have a bonus drawer below the bonus cabinet, basically. And I'm noticing Transcend's getting very good about making sure they have room for like a, a pots and pans drawer. And I love the built-in wastebasket. In a stick and tin camper, so many builders never give us a single spot for wastebasket whatsoever. And here they not only did that, they very in purposely gave us a, uh, you know, a slide open trash drawer. I think that is really, really, really smart, like thoughtful content. Because name stuff that you're going to use every single day when you go camping. And uh, trash can is probably going to be uh, among that list. Now, if I uh, cop a squat over here at the sofa, just to give you an idea. One of the nice things here is if you are really stuck inside on a rainy day, it's super, super social, like... Somebody could be playing cards or playing a little board game over here if you wanted. Uh, you know, if you're occupying the kids, you wanted to add a TV to it. Uh, you know, you have the space up there. But, like, I don't camp with a TV myself. And, and I don't judge people that do. I don't. Do, you know what? You spent your money. You spent the money. Go enjoy it however you want. Something I just realized. I, I didn't mention this previously. You may notice no propane oven in these. Nor is there an option for one. That's just... One of the things that this brand has chosen to do. Some people are okay with that. Like, I don't need a propane oven. Uh, I used one once in an RV just to say that I did. And a lot of people are the same way. But I know some people are like, dude, when I'm boondocking, if I want biscuits and, and cookies and stuff, I, I got to have an oven. 
Okay. And it's not an electric like convection microwave either. It is a full viewing window in the door. It is shade prepped only. So you're going to want to kind of keep that in mind. I th think they did the same thing in the bathroom where they had the octopus fight club. I like these right by the door. Uh, you know, you want to hang a couple hats, jackets, dog leashes or something like that. And one of the unsung benefits of stick and tin campers is since the walls aren't one solid chunky piece, um, changing over, or, or, or rather installing a, uh, a light switch or power outlets or something in the walls is very, very easy. Now, when I heard they were making uh, a less expensive series, first thing I thought in my head is, I wonder if they're going to go Camp Queen. And they did not. They stayed true queen bed. You may notice this curtain sticking under the bed. Um, again, one of the changes that they're going to make is how this curtain is basically mounted so that if you want to, you can tuck it um, around the corner out of the way so you don't necessarily see it. But these will be curtain bedrooms, not hard door bedrooms, like a full Big Brother Transcend will be. But this one's kind of in the way, so we're working around it a little bit. Um, what they did with the headboard power pockets, I think, is flawless execution to me this is how i, I like it done <clears throat> pardon me i keep choking on air here today uh you've got the cutaways behind the hanging wardrobes but you've got household and usb type a and c plugs on both sides of the bed as well by the way it's usually not an issue when it's a no slide bottle but in case you're curious the converter box for your fuses and stuff is up here in the bedroom and you do have a dedicated heat duct for the bedroom just uh down by the floor just like you have ac ducts for the bedroom um you know up in the ceiling i will say since this is just a hard wall that's hollow it's about two inches uh deep i'm a little surprised they didn't put their tv hookups over here instead of over there if you're going to install a TV in the bedroom, to me, it makes a little more sense they would have done it that way. But pff, I don't know. What do I know? I've only been looking at RVs for 15 years. But I, I'm not an authority. I don't get everything right either. Looking at the storage here, um, they don't have drawers. But you see, you do have those uh, the, the pockets under the wardrobes. But because they have the, uh, you know, the, the cutaways, basically, um, you know, behind the headboard power pockets, those uh, storage pockets below the hanging wardrobes are not super duper crazy, insane deep, and hard to get to. You may notice though, one side is a hanging wardrobe and one side is a dresser. Um, the asymmetry sometimes throws people off, but I do think, again, it is important to remember that this is, you know, basically intended as like a weekender, a casual use camper, something that you're probably going to use, I don't know, only a couple times a year, or something like that. Um, it's not made to be the most epic full-time living thing. Kind of curious. Okay. So it's, that glass is a little see-through, but not terribly so. Some people don't like being able to see in their cabinets. So I thought I'd take the extra time to display that for you. Normally, I would take the time to close slides up and show you this thing in road mode, but with no slides, baby, you are good to go. One of the other nice things about simple, easy, no-slide models is it tends to land an RV in the uh, the weight category that a lot of people generally refer to as, as gen very half-ton towable for most half-tons. Now, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> I'm cho <coughs> choking on thin air here. <coughs> okay, so like coffee talk with Linda Richmond while I compose myself, uh, peanuts are neither peas nor nuts, but legumes. <coughs> Discuss. <coughs> Okay, okay. All right, we got it. We're good for now. I don't know. I might die again in a minute. Um, one of the things I think is nice, like you might notice, it still very much reads Grand Design Transcend. But until you really pay attention, I didn't even notice initially. I didn't tune into it because I'm so used to seeing it, maybe. It has the more traditional corrugated metal. Now, it's a little bit lighter weight. It's less costly. But you know what? It does the job just fine. That's why they switched to it here. The full transcend like say a 265 bh that'll be in the big boy transcend versus the the uh little brother explorers um it will still have that little smoother looking fiberglass that you've seen now the nose cap is still a 60 set well not cap but the nose skin is still a 67 percent thicker uh aluminum so the whole thing is basically a stone guard 20 pound propane tanks up front room for two batteries pretty standard fare there power tongue jack and we do have ourselves a nice big pass-through. You might notice that little, you know, box in there, though. We're going to get to that in just a second. That's actually the uh, enclosed docking station. Now, this is not some, like, super epic Arctic Four Seasons camper. It's just an enclosed heated underbelly. But you notice you do have a gas grill cooker hooker right off the side right there. 
and it's located basically right under the awning arm. So if you, um, you know, you want to be under the awning, do some cooking, you can. If you want to be not under the awning, do some cooking, you can. Um, they, they have gone on the transcends with the, the glass front door, which in, incorporates that window. I've been told in like sun country, those things can get awful hot to the touch. So if you got littles, make sure you advise them accordingly. I think they look awesome, but not everybody loves them, but that's, that's what they're using. So, Hey, there you go. Um, the, uh, big entry handle, obviously making it easy to come and go. Now, something I noticed, I looked at this and it's like, okay, JBL sound system, which is better than a lot of your, you know, basic camper stuff. But it's a single speaker. So I started asking about this. And it basically um, still has a left-right like broadcast element inside of it. Um, it's just a, a single sound source. Now, it's mounted up higher than I would personally like. And uh, one of the pieces of things that uh, you know I shared is that I, I don't, I'm not in love with outside speakers and RVs. I think that they're, there's... They're okay. There's nothing wrong with them, but I think that a cheap Bluetooth speaker I have laying around my shelf at home could probably do the job better, and it could do it right down at my campsite exactly where I want it and not blowing away the neighbors or anything like that. But that's my opinion, man. You know, kind of like the, the rug really ties the room together. So leave me a comment. Let's get that back to the factory. Do you think they should keep doing the outside speaker thing or not? Oh, nailed it. First try, obviously. So you may have noticed in the front pass-through, there's that black coily hose with the garden hose sprayer head you can use to hose the wife off and deadbolt yourself in the camper uh because you're about to die well that's that's what that little thing could do now when we go from full big boy transcend uh over here to explore you swap away from a permanently mounted ladder to going with the telescopic ladder prep um or also backup camera prepped on these i haven't when i get back around the other side i'll take a look at the tires it's an import spare I'm going to estimate it's also, uh, they're, they're just import tires all the way around, especially considering the price point of one of these. Now, the roof is still fully walkable, which is nice. Um, it has solar prep only on the roof of these as well. That's another thing that I want to point out. My understanding is they will have an optional, I'm going to guess like, I don't know, 165, 185 watt um, optional solar package uh, available as well. Black tank flush over here. Looks like we are whoa really okay something i didn't expect this is a two-headed sewer monster maybe because the kitchen is so far in front of the axles normally grand design is very good about trying to plumb everything together so i have to believe that they just could not in this instance because you do have a second hookup over here for the gray tank and i know some folks like to you know know that kind of stuff so i thought i'd point that out and again we do have a basic but enclosed docking center. And I really love the fact that they have both a dedicated battery disconnect and a solar disconnect and inverter prep. So it's a basic camper, but if you want to make it a little more get off the grid friendly, it's not going to be like you can live in the desert, not from the government kind of camper, uh, especially not from the factory, but you could do a little bit of upfitting on it for some light duty off grid kind of stuff. Now, when this video first comes out, I won't have yet had a chance to put the camera to it, but my next order of business is the uh, basically the super slide version of this camper. So if you like it, but you're like, eh, it's a little too tight inside, you want a little more room, stay tuned, hit that subscribe button, or just keep an eye on your subscription feed if you're already a member of the old RV nerd herd, and uh, we'll get you some footage on this sucker coming out. But in the meantime, if you want to check um, like MSRP and availability, check the link in the video description. I'll also leave you some other no-slide bunkhouses that I've encountered that maybe you want to take a look at. Now, I mentioned MSRP. I didn't say pricing. Grand Design pricing policies prevent us from displaying discounted sale pricing on our website, RV Trader, anything like that. Now, we don't sell for MSRP. We do sell for a discount, but we can't publish it on our website. So if you're uh, wanting to know a little bit more, give our team a note. We don't need your grandmother's social security number and blood type to be able to do that for you. We just need an opportunity to speak with you. That's it. So until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.